Hello everybody and welcome back to Benjamin Magnus Plays Kerbal Space Program. I'm going to try to keep this introduction very brief because I just had a little bit of a setback in the form of a power surge that just uh, wiped out about half an episode worth of recording. And yesterday I was playing a little bit, trying to get a little bit of science by doing a couple missions and uh, my cat was up on my desk, desk, stepped on my keyboard and mashed the quick load button and it quick loaded back to the last landing I had on the moon, which pretty much erased all of the all, all of the progress I had made, including my trip to Minmus. So uh, it, I, I was a bit disheartened by that, but it wasn't. It's not that big of a deal because we needed to go back there anyway. And this time around, I did do a little bit different on the research. I grabbed heavy rocketry so I can get these big old rockets over here. And I have advanced construction over here. I did not grab um, the specialized control stuff. I'm not sure if I did that on screen or not, but I do still have the advanced flight control in the form of the RCS thrusters. So I'm going to hop over to the vehicle construction area. I believe I already have something I want loaded. Minmus Lander Mark 1. Let's load it up, and here it is, here it is. I tested this on the moon off screen, I did manage to do that, so I know this works really, really well. So I'm going to time compress me constructing the my next rocket that I'm going to use to get to Mimis, so I will be back in just a minute or two. Okay, we're on the launch pad now. We have my ridiculous looking rocket. I have no idea if this is going to work, but we're going to find out in just a second. If this fails, then what I'm just going to do is I'm going to have to revert back to the vehicle assembly, change some things around, and I will be back when I am either in orbit or when I have to try a second launch. So let's get this going. All right, take two. The uh, the center boosters in there wobbled around a lot, so I just add some structural uh, connectors to them to see if that could stabilize them, and we're going to give it another go. Oh, that looks a lot better. We seem to be heading in a pretty straight trajectory, which is exactly what I was looking for, so uh, it's time for some time compression, 
and I will be back again either when I'm either in orbit or have blown myself up. Okay, I am in orbit, and I have to say, I think I like these these bigger engines with the big fuel tanks, especially for a center section. Really, really quite powerful on the thrust, and look how much fuel... I have almost this entire fuel tank left. I think I'm going to be, be very, very set in terms of fuel. I really like that. Also, I don't know why, I, I like the looks of the this stage of the spacecraft. Kind of reminds me of like a Queen Ant or something like that. And I have very fond, nostalgic memories of playing Sim Ant as a child. And so so, so that kind of uh, uh, really rings a bell with me, really makes me happy. So now uh, the, the goal is going to be to get a uh, an orbit around Minmus, which is not going to be the easiest thing. The last time I tried this, it was quite difficult. But we're going to give it a go now, and I'm going to end up time compressing this so that it doesn't take forever. And I'll be back in just a minute. Alright, I do have a, a min-miss encounter uh, plotted now. It didn't take nearly as long as last time, because this time, after my first failed attempt to plot a course, I did uh, do a little tiny burn to get the angle correct on min-miss here, because its orbit is kind of, you know, skewed off the plane by, like, a few degrees. So I tried to match that, and that helped a lot in the, my attempt to get a, a encounter here. So now, um... I have showed it before, so I'm just going to time compress this, and once I get into orbit around uh, Minmus and start heading toward a landing, then I'll, uh, you know, come back and, and I'll reach you there.
Okay, I am in a very good stable orbit around Minmus, and this is the first time I've had a nice up-close look of it. It's got this kind of green tinge to it, and it looks like the best places to, go are, to land are going to be these flat areas. They kind of look like, like frozen lakes or something like that. And uh, if you if you uh, were watching, I did make put some more effort into getting a better orbit. And instead of having that nice, that, that like huge elliptical orbit that kind of came in like this and then went like that, which led to a very, very fast entry, what I did was I uh, tried to make a, a, a smaller, more stable orbit. And look at the periapsis down here is only 11 and a half kilometers. And even that is a little higher than I'd like uh, for what I'm going for now. This way I'm kind of, you know, skimming the surface at a slow speed rather than you know, rocketing down from the heavens at, you know, like 600 kilometers per hour or meters per 600 meters per second. That's even a lot faster than that. All right, so now I'm going to do that again over here to try to get myself a nice... Um, I'd really like to land on this area, in this area over here. So actually what I think I'm going to do is wait till I get over here and, and, and do it. So we'll just speed this up a little and we'll fly around. Actually, I want to... I want to show you this. I, I am pretty. I, I'm floating around pretty close to the surface here. It is huge from my point of view. And let's take a look at our fuel. I'm glad I did put the uh, the the solar panel on there because there were you know periods where I was using the incline reaction wheel to maneuver myself around without the engines going, so the batteries were draining. But that kept me alive. Glad I decided to put that on there at the last instant. Oh, look at that, Kerbin, off, Kerbin in the moon, off in the distance. I like that. Well, something I just realized I should do is take a, a mystery goo observation here. The goo feels right at home, so let's keep that data. That'll be um, recover data from... Oh, I might be able to do that on the way on the way back. Um, what are we looking at? Chief Orbiter on Minmus, well, that is data from... Well, let's get back down there. That's uh, data from space around Minmus, and then we're going to try to land, and we're going to get data from the surface as well. So let's go back to the orbital map and speed this up a little bit till we get around to the periapsis here. Oh, look at that! Isn't that cool? With the time compression, you can you can see Minmus uh, revolving there. That's pretty. That's pretty neat. I like that. All right. Okay, we're just about at our periapsis, so we'll use our incline reaction wheel. I'm glad I threw that in the. Definitely glad I threw that in the the photovoltaic panel on there. Otherwise, I. I'm afraid I would have had very poor control over my spaceship because it is a little lumbering right now. So we'll just do that. We're going to try to get it like this. And what I should try to do is cock my orbit up a little bit. Like that. A little bit more. Like, because I want to try to land right here. Alright, that looks good. And, oh, we're just about at the node, too, so... Just, just almost there. We're gonna get there just in time to, to burn. Shouldn't need that much at all. Just swing it up. Just like that. And now what I can do is I can just, um... Probably would be best is wait till I'm in this area over this little... It looks like, kind of almost looks like a volcano with that little indent right there. Wait till I'm about here... And then I'll burn retrograde and try to drop myself right in this area. So let's find our retrograde indicator. And then I'll just time compress it again. And if, as, you, if, as you can see right here, I'm going at a much slower speed than I was last time. I tried my, I was trying my moon encounters. Now part of that's probably because uh, the gravitational influence here is a lot slower, but it's also because I'm uh, in a better, much more stable orbit than I was the last time I tried this. Now, uh, even if I have any fuel left before I land, I'm obviously going to have to jettison off the butt here. Because I don't need it. Well, I do, I'm not going to say I don't need it, it's just it's in the way. So let's get to this, this our chosen, or near our chosen landing site over here. I don't think I'm going to have to burn very much. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the thrusters from uh, the big ant butt engine there. That's what I've been calling it in my head at least. Okay, we're about there. I'm going to use that to degrade my orbit, and then I will uh, jettison it off, and I'll use all this stuff to land. So let's, again, find our retrograde indicator, which should be off this way. There it is. There we go. 
Okay, let's just orient my spacecraft so it's easier to figure out which direction's up and down. We'll just give it a little rotation there. That's good. Okay, now all I need to do is burn a little bit in the retrograde. And as you can see, we're degrading, we're degrading, we're degrading. And I just want to get it somewhere so it lands in this area. Let's give it a little more oomph. Don't need a lot. See, look, I'm I'm barely thrusting. And I want to shoot right for the middle of this so I have plenty of leeway. There. There, there we go. There we go. Okay, we're good. Now I'm going to get rid of this. Because we don't need it anymore. We'll prop our landing gear out. I have tested this, I think I mentioned that before, I tested this on the moon, so I know it works relatively well. I wonder if uh, closer to the surface here I can get any better mystery goo. Goo feels right at home here. I don't know if, I, maybe I'll do, no, I'm going to reset that one. I'm going to do that one when I'm on the surface. Oh, look how beautiful that is. Look how beautiful that is. We're, we're shooting, we're, we're approaching our landing zone, and you can see Kerbin rising over the Minmus, uh, like, horizon here, and the moon rising above that. Oh, that's just so beautiful. Okay, so uh, we're, we're, we're okay. We're, we're doing good. We're heading right for where we should be. We're going at a pretty slow pace, so we're just going to get over here like this. It automatically slowed down because I was below a certain uh, altitude. Now we're in a nice flat landing area. Looks like it should be perfectly fine, so I'm going to start... Th oh, uh, you know what? I could have done that in one stage. I guess I forgot to. I forgot to combine those stages, which is normally a decoupling and uh, the next thrusters turning on is usually something I do in the same stage, but I guess I forgot to. No big deal, didn't didn't hurt anything. This is going to be more than enough fuel to get back. I probably could have done it without these little side, side tanks even. All right, now we're barely moving. And as you can see, the we're, we're starting to fall down. The retrograde indicator is uh, drifting up towards the like north pole here on the gyroscope which means we're getting closer to a vertical trajectory. Let's take a look at the orbital map, and as you can see, we just got that tiny little thing. Not quite vertical, but it's close. And it's getting closer. And because uh, I've never landed on Minmus before, definitely never landed on Minmus before, I have high hopes for this. Very high hopes. You know what I should actually do is um, autosave? Quick save. Do a quick save right there, just in case I uh, bungle this. I, want, I don't want to have to do that whole process again like I was doing in some of my earlier episodes. Now, this is definitely not something I'm quite used to. Like, with the moon's so much larger than Minmus, the gravity's so much more intense that you it really pulls you down to the surface. And that's probably the reason, I one of the biggest reasons I probably could have gotten away without these tanks at all, these engines on the side, is the gravity's so weak here that it makes for a much smoother transitions down to the ground, and it's going to be really easy to get off the surface. The smallest bit of thrust is going to push me up pretty pretty hard. Let's turn on our lights just in case. No, not that close. Let's give it a little thrust. I don't want to... I want to make sure it's a nice, gentle... Oh, there's my shadow right there. Nice, gentle descent here. And I did have those lights on. I didn't think I was going to need them because I'm much better at controlling my landing zone now than I was the first time I tried this. So I can always try to shoot for a, a nice, nice bright areas. But I put them on there just in case. A little more thrust. Want to make sure I'm not falling. I, I, I like it to be about three meters per second when I hit the ground. So we're gonna get it down like that. Falling straight down now. A little more thrust. Get it so as we're barely moving and cut it out. This looks good. We're looking good. We're looking good. Very gentle. Very, very gentle. Perfect. Oh, we actually bounced just the slightest bit, but that was perfect. That was excellent. Oh, so good. So good. I I gotta say, I like how the photovoltaics uh, orient themselves to face the sunlight. So now we are on Minmus for the very, very first time in my Kerbal career. So we're going to take some Mystery Goo observations, and it was good that I waited because that was more science for me. We're going to keep that data. Let's take a crew report. You record... I, I, I hate it when it does that. You recorded the crew's assessment of the situation. Oh, well. I was, I was hoping for something a little more interesting. Okay, some good data there. Now we're going to use our science uh, junior material bay. 
While the material samples were processed, you begin to turn your thoughts onto how much Min Mist looks like a mint desert. You have discovered that you are now hungry. Nice. Oh, and look at that science. 125. Beautiful. Keep that data. Do an EVA. And just let go. Oh, and we're floating, we're floating, we're floating. Oh, that was beautiful. Oh, so nice. So nice. And look at the moon off in the distance there. Where no Kerbin and no Dapper Gamer has gone before. Whee! Ah, just thrilled that this worked out. Let's take a surface sample. 150 signs. Nice. The surface seems to consist of tiny crystal-like grains. Very pretty, probably not edible. We'll keep that data. So much science from this. Plant a flag, because why wouldn't we? Come on now. Toss that down into the mint desert. test. Delicious mint dessert. Yes, I know I spelled that dessert. Okay, we have, oh, just take, just, I'm just gonna take a second to, to, to breathe that in. Look, just look how wonderful that is. So nice with our little, oh, I love it. Oh, I can't express how happy I am with this. Okay, just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, so let's get our thrusters going. Oh, way too much, way too much. Down. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Oh, that went so well. So well. Oh, so happy. Okay. Okay, very good. I'm going to call it an episode here because I'm so ecstatic, so thrilled with this progress. If you've enjoyed this episode, drop me a like, leave me a comment, and if you're interested in more Benjamin Magnus Plays Kerbal Space Program, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.